If you took a cannabis bud and ate it raw, it wouldn't have very much effect. But if you heat it, you can change the game entirely through an important process called decarboxylation. Decarboxylation, what is it? How does it work? And why is it so important? Find out on this episode of Weed Easy by The Growth Up. No matter how you choose to use cannabis, it's important to understand how decarboxylation works so that you can get the most out of your bud. While cannabinoids like THC occur in the cannabis plant naturally, the concentrations are very low. That's why if you eat raw cannabis, it doesn't do very much. Two of the most famous active compounds in cannabis are THC and CBD. However, before THC and CBD become active, they start out as THCA and CBDA. THCA and CBDA are not active and therefore can't get you high. To get the full effects of cannabis, you must decarboxylate it first, or use heat to activate the THCA and CBDA and convert them into THC and CBD. What happens during decarboxylation? Decarboxylation is a chemical reaction that removes a carboxyl group. When cannabis is heated, this happens to THCA and CBDA, converting them to THC and CBD. Without decarboxylation, THCA and CBDA wouldn't be converted to THC and CBD, and you wouldn't get high. Smoking and vaping both decarboxylate cannabis because they both use heat to activate the cannabinoids. And decarboxylation is especially important when it comes to making your own edibles or cannabis-infused treats. To decarboxylate your bud for edibles, there are two critical elements to the process. Temperature. The first is the temperature used to heat your cannabis. Depending on the device you use, the temperature required may differ. When decarboxylating cannabis for use in edibles, most people use an oven, crock pot, or toaster oven. Let's look at an oven as an example. Ideally, you wanna shoot for around 104 to 115 degrees Celsius, or 220 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. This will help convert the majority of the cannabinoids and preserve the terpenes. Keep in mind that every oven's temperature varies by as much as 10 degrees, so invest in a good thermometer to properly monitor the temperature inside the oven. Time. The second element in decarboxylation is how long you heat your cannabis for. If you don't heat it long enough, it won't decarboxylate. But if you heat it too long, you can lose a lot of the cannabinoids, terpenes, and other good stuff. It's a delicate balance. For decarboxylation in an oven, it's recommended that you bake your cannabis for 30 to 40 minutes to maximize conversion. Typically, maximum conversion is reached once you hit 70% decarboxylation. The THC conversion slows down at this point and instead converts to CBN, a different cannabinoid that isn't psychoactive to grind or not to grind. Some people will tell you to grind your cannabis before decarboxylating and some will not. We recommend not grinding your cannabis before decarboxylation. Instead, break it into smaller pieces with your hands as this preserves the trichomes better and will make the most of your butt. In the end, the important thing to remember with decarboxylation is to start low and go slow to make every cannabinoid count. Thanks for watching Weed Easy by The Growth Op. Subscribe to our channel for more cannabis content and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Visit thegrowthop.com, the premium destination for cannabis news and views.